Hello. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Hi. Hi, Tony, Ovidu, Gertrud, Lynette, Petra. And there's also an Indian, I saw a name, an Indian name. Priyanka is online, that's good. Tony, Muslim Indian, I can't see the name now. Can you hear me well, everyone? Just need to know that. Yes, good, that's good. Let's see what we have today. We have to have something interesting, yeah? Um, I'm going to start with the case today and explain to you the case and also the whole case taking procedure and the analysis that we did. Uh, and I'm also going to slowly introduce you to our recent, very recent in last years that we are working on this concept and each people over during this lab and it is about relationships between each of other. So I'm going to touch slightly on this concept. Um, and uh, before that, I'm going to do this case. And through this case, we will do it. It was a case that I have, uh, Sachindra and I have taken in 2006, yeah? So it's about um, almost seven years now since this case. And he did brilliantly for the first three years, after which he kind of, you know, because he was doing so well, he uh, did not give so many follow-ups. But I know about his uh, progress through a lot of friends. And now he's not on any active medication, but he is, I can say, very well treated uh, of his problems. So A, the case has a long follow-up, but also the reason I want to share this case with you is because this was exactly the time when we came across this new theory that we are working with nowadays, you know, this six years ago, this time. It was the time when we developed an understanding of remedy relationships through our patients. This is very important to understand that whenever we've done something or come across something new or stumbled onto something new, it has always been through our clients. I would say that they have been a source of challenge for us and they have taught us or they have helped us to go on new journeys, yeah? Um, so let's start with the case. He's also a very, very interesting character. Uh, he's about 50, uh, 54 or 55 years old. And as he entered into my clinic, he was this really huge and a well-built personality who would, I would now say, had also become a little obese. So initially he must have been really well-built, but over the years he was also a little more plumper. He had quite an air when he entered the clinic. And then as he sat in front of me, uh, the first thing he told me was, hi, you know, you are the Joshis and my surname is also Joshi. Um, I've changed certain names and things so that, you know, um, just to maintain privacy of the patient. And he said, uh, but I'm not the same caste as you are, and I hope you understand that. And I was taking a little, uh, taken aback because, you know, um, that's not what patients say. Yeah, They come, they start telling us their complaints. And I said, can you see? Just, okay. You can all see me and hear me well, huh? Okay. So, uh, he said, 
he said listen i'm not the same caste as you and i said no, okay i'm sorry but uh, what made you mention that because you know as a homeopath for me it's very interesting whatever the patient mentions it can even be um it can even be not related to the case or the complaint at all but everything interesting or peculiar the patient mentions uh becomes a part of not becomes is a part of his personality and becomes an important part of my case taking so i said can you tell me a little bit about this what made you you know want to know i just need to understand you as a person so if you don't mind and he said no i i really want to make this clear and i do this every time because the kind of surname that i have the second name yeah or the family name he said uh can be many communities for example you're a joshi but you know maybe you're a, a gujarati or you're a maharashtrian i don't know so those are two different communities in our country and he said you know you might be a gujarati joshi but i'm not i'm a maharashtrian and i must tell you this because this is very important every time i go to meet someone they look at my surname and they say ha ah, joshi and they start speaking to me in gujarati that's not my language speak to me in hindi which is the national language speak to me in hindi uh, in english which is a language i know very well but how can you assume that i am from a certain certain community just because you are from that community and i hate it when people take me for granted like this and i said okay thank you it was very peculiar how he was getting so upset about the situation and i thought that it definitely must be a part of his personality sometime later i will probe into it but i won't start into it right away because he is already defensive and i keep asking more about so why did you feel this and what did you feel is he might just get a little more on the defensive yeah so i said okay i understand i've made note of it and in my mind i made a made a note that i will ask about this later and we started with the case i said tell me about your complaints let le let's leave your caste and your surname aside let's talk about your physical complaints and he said uh, well he has very severe acidity and he also has uh, a bronchitis which keeps recurring a chronic bronchitis he has uh, elevated uh, sugar levels and um, he also has hypertension he is uh, already on some allopathic medication for the elevated sugar levels for his diabetes but because of his stress levels the the sugar levels are still very very uncontrolled um and he said my main thing is if you can help me with the asthma and with the um which was the other thing he said the the severe acidity he said it's so severe that every day i must start my day with an antacid for the last maybe 5 6 years now and some days i might even have to take two because the acidity is so severe so i really want something about it doctor and you know honestly i am someone he says this man was interesting he was he would hardly even allow me to ask a question he would just go on and on and on so he says honestly i am someone who needs a remedy if you have a problem i am not someone who will wait and who will think about it and say okay we'll think about it tomorrow no it has to be done right now so if there is a problem if i've come to you as a doctor you have to give a remedy and you have to be able to help me with it there was a kind of an impatience more than an impatience i would say there was a kind of a if i want something i get it you know i had i would see we we only have to see as the case goes whether it's an impatience or it's a determination to get something and we will see as the case goes further there are some people who cannot see the video um but i think some can see it yeah quite a few can see it as well so i'm going to continue speaking um and of course when you go back to the recording you will be able to see me and hear me 
Okay. So I said, yes, tell me. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about your complaints? Because if you tell me about your complaints, I will be able to help you. And he said, well, the complaint is I get up in the morning and I don't want to feel the burning. So even before the burning comes, I pop in a pill. Because if there is a solution, then I go for a solution. I'm not somebody who will wait. I'm not somebody who will sit back and say, okay, I will do it later or maybe tomorrow. This is the second time he said it, yeah, that I'm not somebody who will sit back. So I said, okay, but a, a little bit more about the pain, like when you had it, can you tell me? Or with the bronchitis, can you tell me the symptoms? And he said, I get it almost once every two to three months. It's a very severe cough and cold and I have to take an antibiotic because it completely cripples me. I start having high fever. It's a very productive cough. It's a thick green cough that he brings out phlegm, sorry, that he brings out. And he said, um, otherwise, you know, I'm, and so I said, you know, I tried to ask, are there some modalities? Are there some concomitants, you know, location, sensation, modality, concomitant of the case? And he said, I don't have time for all this. I don't have time to look at when I'm coughing and how much I'm coughing and what makes it better. You take a medicine and that should make it better. I mean, I've come to a doctor. Don't you think that's how it should work? I was also, uh, I was also taking in his whole demeanor, his whole, um, you know, body language. The way he was like, you know, if I want it, I get it. And, you know, if I've come to the doctor, I should be able to get this. You know, there was always, this is happening and this is the solution and the two should happen. You know, there was also a lot of authority as he spoke to me. So I thought he's going to be a tough one to crack. And also he's going to be a tough one if he doesn't get results. And I said, okay, do you want to, okay. So, and he said, I said, okay, just to understand your symptoms and your nature, I need to ask you a little more. And he said, well, I am someone who always needs an answer to everything. So I'm someone who will work for, you know, even in my situation in life, I work to get what I want. And, you know, even if I go to a doctor, I want an answer to my solution, uh, uh, sorry, to my problem. I'm not someone, you see, he used a very interesting word. And I want to go back to that word. He said, you see, I'm a very, very aggressive and go-getter kind of a person. That's how I am in my usual life. That was very interesting. And I thought this man is not going to give me any more physical and instead of just pushing and pushing, okay, so is this paining? Is this paining after, you know, do you have, do you have burps after your problems or after you eat? Sorry, not after your problems. Do you have burping after you eat or do you have burning in the morning or evening and unnecessary probing? I thought he's not going to give me that, but he started off with something very important, which is that, you know, I am very aggressive and I'm a personality who's a go-getter. So let me just go into it and slowly unfold his personality from there. So I said, tell me about this. I'm outgoing, I'm a go-getter, and I'm aggressive. These are the three words he used. And he immediately, no, it was like he jumped at this. This was his interesting topic. He was not very happy talking about the stomach and the uh, asthma, but he was very happy talking about the situation in his life. So that's the other thing we do with case taking is, which we, we observe what is it that the patient wants to talk about. Yeah? And through that, we find the remedy. Some patients want to talk about every detail of their complaint. And surely in that complaint is the pattern, is the hidden pattern of the case. Some patients like to talk about emotions. Some patients like to talk about themselves, whatever. So you leave the choice to the patient. Yeah, and then from wherever you will still be able to come to the pattern. And I said, describe this outgoing. Yeah, I already told you that. He said, Do you know what? 
I love interacting with people. So there's also this extrovertedness, yeah, this need to interact with people and love for communication. He said, I have a team working under me. And then he, you know, most of the time, just to give you his body language, he sat like this, you know, in the cave. Like, he was sitting like this. And, you know, I'm sitting there making notes. Yes, what's happening to you? And he looks like he's absolutely in command of the situation. You know, he's resting his hand behind on the chair. And, you know, feel, he felt like he was totally, one is totally at ease. And he also felt like he was, you know, uh, kind of showing off a little bit. Okay. Uh, but this is just my observation. And I'm not going to make a conclusion at this point. But I just make observation of the body language of the patient. And he says, I'm heading a group. I was the CEO of one of the very big companies and he, he of the country. And he was one of the big CEOs. I'm going to avoid talking about the name of the company. And he said, I used to be a director for this company. So he didn't own the company. The owners were others, but they had, so he was like the working CEO or the functional CEO of the con, uh, company, whereas the company was owned by other people. And he says, and I worked there for 16 years and I headed the group. So, you know, and this was, I'm talking of a huge company with 55 to 60 plants all across the country. I said, okay. And he says, I've done a lot of traveling. I've done a lot of meeting people, you know. And and when you do a lot of traveling, meeting people, selling your business everywhere, you need to be in a good frame of mind. And you need to have a good wit. And I have all of that. Surely you can take the rubric egotism, yeah. And, you know, loud and this kind of boisterous personality, yeah. And that's what he was. And he said, and you know what, one thing that affects me is I'm speaking to someone, I am talking to someone, I'm in the middle of this very important deal that I'm making, and I don't want a headache at that point of time, or I don't want asthma at that point of time, you know, but that's what I mean by I'm aggressive and go-getter. I have gone for this event, I have gone for this meeting. I'm going to crack the deal and come back. I don't want all these things niggling and bothering me. This this irritates me. I hope you understand, doctor. Okay. You know, I, so I said, okay, good. Just a little bit more about this outgoing, aggressive personality. You're doing very well. I need to know a little bit more. And he says, my personality comes from my nature of work. Yeah. I have also been a sportsman, you know. I mean, so what if I were, I'm a CEO? When I was young, I was very heavily into sports doctor. And I have played sports at a high level. I've played football, hockey, cricket. You know, name it as a young boy, I played all of it. Today, I don't. Look at me. You can see me and you know that I don't play anything. But there was a time... I used to play all of those. Haughty, you know, you can also take the rubric haughty. He was quite proud and quite um, uh, vocal about his achievements. <clears throat> he says, I, you know, I have played football at a high level. I used to play for the state, mind you. And I said, okay, noted. And I have been healthy. I have been outgoing. I'm also a fun-loving guy, doctor. You know what? I don't just work. I'm also a fun-loving guy. You tell me about a party and I am there. I love partying. Okay, I said. I have friends. I have a social circle. I love drinking. I said, okay, point noted. You know, and, and then he said, listen, doctor, I have been to the best of the five stars in the country. And I've never paid, never paid in any one of them because, you know, I'm the CEO. I'm going through the company. The company pays for everything. So, you know, I've, I've, I've really had a very luxurious life. 
you know, I've dealt with big brands. Okay, I said, yeah. And, you know, so I, I'm somebody who's, who's, you know, been there, done that kind of a person. But he then told me, I have also eaten at the most smallest food joint on the street. And I have no issues with it. I can survive in any condition. Yeah, I've done the best. But you take me to a very small joint on the road. And, you know, in India, we have a lot of hawkers and vendors. And he named some very uh, famous hawkers and vendors that we have in the city of Bombay. And he says, I've been there and I've eaten there. And, you know, I, I, I have no issues about, oh, I'm this big guy, so I can't go on the street and eat. I don't have all of that. I will go and eat. And he says, I have friends. Some of them are the richest in the world. And then I have friends. Some of them are the poorest in the world, but they are good people. Whether they are rich or poor doesn't matter to me, but I have to have that wavelength and they are, you know, people I value. So basically, I'm trying to tell you that, you know, I, I'm, I'm, this is my personality. You know, this is a go-getter or aggressive or that's what I am. What more do you want to know about me? So up till now, I had only the superficial bits, but there was a strong feeling that, you know, he's already at the top, that he has a position, that he has a, you know, status or that he is a well achieved. And he, it's important for him to dish it out or put it to me or to express this, you know, position or power or this whatever he has. Yeah. These are my words at the moment, but I'm telling you that it's important for him to show me because up till now, I can only say that he was showing off. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not so superficial because it's part of his pattern that he feels he is there. Yeah. And he's worked hard for it or whatever, but it's, you know, this need to have so much, this need to be at this position, this need to be at this high level is part of his pattern and it must be part of his pattern and that's why it has taken him there in reality okay in reality also he's doing all of this but this reality is because he perceives it like that and he has created this position for himself so i do consider that when when i finally understand this patient when i finally come down to the core personality these will be very important traits yeah this position, this power, this status, this flaunting, all of this. I said a little bit about aggressive. I understand you've done all of this, but just to understand your aggressive personality, what do you mean? He says, I have fun, but I also deliver. I deliver results. I'm extremely sharp. My functions are very alert. You can say I'm hyper alert. I don't sit and watch a movie or I don't sit and delegate or just watch my juniors doing things. I get active. I, you know, there are people, the people working under me are masters in, gra in management from some of the best countries uh, from some of the best universities all over the world and I find them to be nerds. I find them to be bookworms. You know, they've passed their exams and they are 20 years younger than me. But I actually talk to them and say, hey, you guys are nerds. Get onto the floor. You need to go visit the site. You need to be hands-on with situations. You know, People, so he now started talking about these juniors who come into his office and he says, people come into the office and they dictate this guy is supposed to do that and that guy is supposed to do that and they, they give out work like this and I tell them, listen boss, you can't tell me anything. And I also see to it and I tell them, if you want to get work done, you have to go down with your employees. You have to get onto the floor. 
he kept saying this every time you have to get onto the floor which means you have to get into the action or you have to work along with your team that's what he meant he says i have had a very street smart approach to life i have not been very well educated but i knew what i wanted and i grew up that i went up the ladder solving problems you know i said and he says this is how i am i said tell me a little bit you said i'm alert i'm hyper alert he said if my team is doing something let me give you an example because we are into marketing and we have to market our um, product everywhere we have a lot of events to do and sometimes i am at the head of these events i we do rock shows we you know we do musical shows and we spend you know we spending millions of uh, rupees on this and i need to ensure that everything on the show is going in order and whereas somebody else will not even go and look at the site and will not even do anything i tell my boys let's go boys let's do it they are putting up the props i want to see how the props are done they are putting up something i want to know i want to know which star they are inviting for the music show or whatever i will physically be present there to see everything is in order that's another thing i am a perfectionist so yes he is dictatorial no i'm sorry dictatorial would be a wrong word he is this pompous and haughty and egoistic guy but there is another element to him and that is he is an extreme perfectionist and he goes there he sees to it that he delivers you know so he has this a uh, knack of going there and doing things himself and he says i don't rest until things are perfect i cannot sit on my desk and just you know talk to someone on the phone and say is are things happening the way they should be i participate i don't just give orders to younger boys i involve myself with the boys and i say boys let's do it i don't like these bosses of other companies who are not even aware of what their employees feel or what their employees are doing so basically if you want to know my personality i'm someone who commands from the front which means that you know in a war i think it's a it's an indian uh, uh, indian idiom that he has just completely converted into english but like somebody who commands from the front he's there and you know for his party for his for his team and from there he sets out orders and then he does along with them aha uh-huh. so i now understand that as a leader you know he has this other quality there's egotism there's perfectionism another third quality is leading yeah because he's always been telling me my boys and i go and i have a team so it's also important for him to lead now whoever this personality is must have this depth and this strength yeah and the remedy must have this depth and strength when we come to prescribing a remedy for him so that's also in my mind as the case goes i'm only listening but these are the thoughts that are going in my mind i'm listening but i'm also actively collecting important issues and as a leader he is not a leader who will just tell others what to do for example very clearly in my mind he is not a platina like like person you know he you, he, you can say platina like you know he is so haughty and you know he is so um <clears throat> um egoistic and you know i am at the top i am the you know the queen kind of an attitude that we know of platina but here is someone who goes on the floor and does it so along with that immense uh, um, you know ego and this flaunting he also has a desire to perform and be there for his people yeah that's a slightly different kind of a feeling and i need to understand that and that will be part of his personality as we understand and understand him in the end so i said aha uh-huh, tell me about this you command from the front and he says when you lead an army you lead it from the front 
you yourself demonstrate to them what to do because you know very well what to do. I said, uh-huh, tell me that. Describe leading an army. You know, especially in sales, when there is an event and, you know, you have to negotiate with a client, I know very well how to do it. So I tell my boys, I explain it to them. You know, this is how you will make the deal. This is what you will say. I have a lot of information. I gather all the information and my store of experience is amazing. I'm telling you that. You have to believe me. And I said, I believe everything you say. And he says, you know, I, I, I have a very clear idea and I have made all my homework and I know exactly what my clients want. And I know exactly at what point we'll be able to make the deal. So I keep a very good track of everything that's happening around. And, you know, I, I have a lot of information much before I make the deal. So you see, A, he's a perfectionist. B, he has, you know, um, um, what was he telling? He said he has this thing of commanding from the front has strategy yeah what he's trying to tell me is that he has the whole idea of everything that's happening and he says you know I have made my homework and before I go to make the deal I've already made all the homework possible and then I go and crack the deal that's the kind of person he is and he says He says, sometimes my boys can't do it because they haven't done the homework enough. But I have done all this homework and then I say, okay, now it's not your job. Now I will do it. And I go and crack the deal because I have done all this homework. And that's when I tell them, you know what, you have all your degrees, but you haven't done the groundwork. The groundwork is very, very important. And that feels great. You know, it really feels great to be a leader. He said, yeah, can you describe this to me? feels great to be a leader. Now, as he's telling this, you know what, it's common sense or I would say it comes naturally, yeah, that the remedy must have this strength, this power, this desire to lead it was covering some of his symptoms yeah because nitric acid also has flaunting yeah it has pompousness yeah glamour glitter but nitric acid is made from nitrogen hydrogen and oxygen these are elements of the first two rows of the periodic table yeah and I just explained to you in the first episode of this series about the periodic table a little bit, didn't talk much about it, but that as you go down the periodic table, the elements get heavier and larger. This we all know from our work in chemistry or from our basic study in science at school. So the elements that are on the high rows are much smaller and have much smaller egos and smaller issues. So while a nitric acid would just be flaunting to get fun, or to enjoy, yeah, to get those basic pleasures in life. This man is not enjoying by getting basic pleasures in life. He is somebody who th puts himself at a very high position and he has developed a lot. He has become very heavy in his pattern. So he is at a much lower level. Uh, when I say lower level, he is at a much lower row or a heavier row if we are looking at the periodic table. Yeah. Uh, so I go next. I say, describe this leader. And he says, you know what? Remember one thing. A leader must also not just be able to command from the front, but he must also be someone who is very considerate. You have to be a considerate person if you're a leader. Yeah. 
and I am obsessed with success. Let me tell you this. You know, I am very, very obsessed with success. This could also be my insecurity. You know, everybody has insecurity. Well, my insecurity is I must be 100% successful. I cannot fail. So, you know, he has very high expectations from himself. Just want to tell you at this point also that the miasm in this case is a very, very cancerous miasm. Cancer as a miasm has a lot of strength and puts a lot of expectations on himself and others and is a perfectionist and does everything to the T and has almost superhuman expectations from himself and from others. And he says, I can never fail. In my 26 years of experience, I have never failed. Not once. Just twice. No, sorry, he says, I have failed, but only twice. And, uh, you know, I, that, that failure was, but I don't even call it a failure. And I said, would you like to tell me about the failure? And he says, you know what? Let me explain it to you. And he gave me a very nice example which explained to me his, his character as a person. He said, I was, remember I told you I was the CEO of this company and I built up this company and we had 62 plants all over the country, blah, 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 blah. And he said, then the company was overtaken by another company. So there was a merger happening with another multinational. And he said, this was a local company, local Indian company. And he said, as the merger happened, what happens with most mergers is the new company that comes in does a lot of layoff. I'm going to explain in short because he's written a lot. I mean, the transcription is a lot. And he said, when the new company comes in, they lay off a lot of people from the old company. They bring in their new people. And so people suddenly become jobless. And when my company decided, when, when it was bought by this other company, and I was the CEO, so the CEO helps in the merger. And he said, I saw to it that not one single man of my company was laid off. And I really fought with all these big guys. I fought with each and every one of them. And I took the matter to court and, you know, I worked hard on my, uh, my papers and, you know, I presented a very tough case and I saw to it that every single person who was in the old company was taken up in the new company. I really fight for the weak ones. I, it totally hurts me to see, you know, injustice. And he says, it was a huge merger. It was a merger of about 500 million or something like this. And at the end of it, he said, the company was so, the new company, which was taking over this old company. Of course, he said, I was thrown out. I wouldn't be the CEO anymore. And I knew it. But he also said that, the company, the new company, did not give me any bonus. He says, when a merger like this happens, the CEO gets a whole chunk of money. And this company was so upset with me that, you know, I really got nothing. And everybody around and my family and everybody said, you know, you're being foolish. And I said, I'm not being foolish. I'm being strong. And then I went into consultancy and I moved business. And he said, now I'm making the same amount of money. So I never had the confidence, I'm sorry, I never had the doubt that I would not make money. I, I was very confident that I would be able to get it. When they said you are failing and you're foolish, I said, I'm strong. I know what I'm doing. But it was very important to me that all those people who were under me got a job. It's almost like you are the father. It's almost like you are the king of a kingdom and you have to take care of your subjects and though I did not own the company I was only running it for the owners for me it was my kingdom it was my and then he doesn't answer but it was his something yeah this is his feeling and 
I still choose to believe that I wasn't foolish, that I was very strong, and that I did the right thing. And you know what? In few years after I left that company, today I have the similar power, similar position, and similar status. What does this give you? I asked him. Power, position, status. What is this experience? You know what? What was happening in my mind until now was that I have uh okay i have understood that the core pattern of this personality is to um to lead to uh, dictate or lead everyone not just lead also take care of everyone here yeah, there is not only the element of leading but there is also the element of like for example what he did with this company is he took care of each and every single person in that company so there is this element of being responsible yeah and i'm sorry because i went through that whole thing very quickly as i explained to you he also used the word i was responsible for all these people who are under me like the father of the children so he puts himself at that position like he's the father he's the king so there was that to the personality there was of course power status position perfection now i needed to know that all of these were clothes of this personality yeah they are the clothes that make the outside what was the core inside pattern you know because something like this can be found in the mineral kingdom something like this can be found in the plant kingdom something like this can be found in the animal kingdom okay but which kingdom does this really heavy leader or uh, egoistic perfectionist boisterous loud person come from and i needed to understand this so it was for that that i asked him what is the feeling of status because the feeling of status in a mineral let's say we are looking at the sixth row of the periodic table which has remedies like aurum platina osmium mercury thallium plumbum the sixth row has a feeling that they are the leaders it's their responsibility very much like him and that they do not have to fail in this responsibility or that they have to achieve this responsibility to the highest um order in a plant who would have this responsibility the feeling would be so in the in the in the mineral it would be a feeling of inadequacy yeah that's what i'm trying to say inadequacy if he cannot get it and complete adequacy if he gets it yeah in the mineral kingdom i would think of somebody very strong and automatically what comes to your mind i'm very sure is someone like orum ha huh? someone like platina yeah yes orum you're right absolutely right not platina so much because platina has a haughtiness which doesn't have the feeling of care as much as orum has because orum has guilt when you look at the rubrics of orum orum has guilt yeah and this is a man who's say who had such an immense guilt about the people and therefore he worked hard for all his people so orum is much more care responsibility yeah see so somebody more like that and when you look at a plant then in the plant kingdom it has to be somebody who feels so overwhelmed by this responsibility yeah that it's as if he is the whole and soul and if he didn't do it he would be totally overwhelmed and crushed and in the animal kingdom that feeling that i am the leader the responsible the king would be more with the feeling this is mine yeah this is who i am nobody can take it from me because he's an animal so it's all about him and the environment or i take it from everyone whatever could be either way
and I did it to know what is this feeling of power and status within him. Does it have the, you know, does it have the core pattern of a plant, a mineral, or an animal? And so I asked him, describe this position, power, and status. And he said, that's the three things you work for in life. You know, that's all I've worked for in life. Power, position, and status. You work for money, but what does money give you finally? Money gives you the feeling of power. Gives you the feeling of achievement. And when you have achievement, you have power over the people. Do you know, today, wherever I go, people are all, you know, oh, oh, come here, Mr. Joshi, and sit with us, and this and that. You know, I command that respect from people because I have money. Why do I have money? I'm sorry. I have power. Why do I have power? Because I have money. Status gives you a feeling that you are better than everyone else. It gives you a feeling that you're on a higher level, that you're on a top level. And that's a good feeling, you know. But, he says, you have to keep your ego in check. Your ego cannot become destructive. And you have to be able to see that people under you are happy. You must see that people around you, the people who are working for you, the people whose jobs depend on you, these people are happy. In 16 years, in 20 years of my working with different companies, I have provided hundreds of jobs to people. I have personally developed so many people's careers. I have personally helped so many people and mentored them and changed and transformed their lives. Changed them from simple salesmen to managers to marketing managers to even, you know, starting their own factories. So I think power is also about building others. I'm ready to fight with anyone if they trouble the weak one. I don't take it. Now, this was another interesting thing because, you know, what he was doing was he was uh, taking care of the weak ones. Yeah. And what is this? You know, how do I explain that in this whole pattern of the person? And I said, can you tell me this? I even take up a fight with the weak ones. And he says, look, I don't fight for myself. For example, what I was telling you about that company, they... I fought for all those people and I didn't get a one single penny when I left that company. But that's okay. But I fought for those people. I fought for the people who were working under me. And that's how one should be. And, you know, I, I can't take injustice. I told you, justice is very important. Justice is, I do my job well. I get paid for it. I get the credit for you. You do your job well, you get the credit for it. So I said, yeah, tell me a little bit more about that. And he says, you know, that's another thing that really irritates me. If we are talking of my personality, I think you should know this doctor. And said, yes, yes, please tell me. And he says, you know, unfortunately, People today just take away what belongs to someone else. I said, yeah, tell me about that. And he says, it's very frustrating and it totally bugs me, makes me angry, makes me frustrated when people simply take away from others. People take away your credit. Someone else takes away that which was yours. And that's what I feel with injustice. Yeah. Can you go more into it a little bit? Someone takes away your credit. Now, here I understood that though he has a feeling of being a, you know, leader and a responsible person and um, somebody who has, uh, who takes care of everyone, somebody who feels I'm the father, I am the king, somebody who is a perfectionist, yeah? So all these qualities are like Aurum. Suddenly at this point, he starts to say, he starts to talk about injustice and I ask him, what is injustice? And his feeling is, somebody takes away somebody else's credit. 
which means someone takes away what belongs to the other person this does not happen in the mineral or the plant kingdom this happens in the animal kingdom where a person uh, i mean you know because 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 animals cannot make their own food the basic survival strategy of an animal is to eat someone else either you eat a plant if you're a herbivore but you're still eating someone else or you eat an animal if you're a carnivore or you take away the house of another animal yeah there are always animals fighting for shelter so the animal kingdom survives by snatching what belongs to the other or by protecting from the others what belongs to them don't kill me you know you can't kill me for food i need to escape so i protect my life from the predator so this this kind of language when i hear that how can someone take what belongs to me is not looking inward as where is my capacity but is looking outwards as why is that person doing it to me yeah and this is an animal quality this was almost about one and a half hours of the case and everything in the beginning he spoke about was very orum like but at this point i understood that his feeling of credit his feeling of his power is nobody else should take it from me okay we'll go into this a little bit more i said can you describe this someone else takes away your credit and he says do you know what in in the company you can't say you can't talk about it you have to be very curt uh, you have to be very courteous and you have to forget it then you know this is the politics of the world but i tell you it gets me so irritated and so frustrated and then he actually hit his hand on the table when he said that irritated and frustrated and it was such a powerful punch on the table made a loud sound almost and he says you can't be violent you can't be rude you know you are at a very high level and you have to get back at that person in some other way and you know professionally doctor you can't you know though i have been telling you i am aggressive i am aggressive i haven't slapped anyone until now i haven't done anything wrong i haven't abused anyone you know i'm just aggressive at my work so that's another thing i want to tell you at and having worked with animals in the last 6 years sichandra and i have worked extensively with several animal cases and animal remedies and we have you know made a chart of the whole animal kingdom starting from the most primitive animals to the most evolved animals and uh what i wanted to tell you is that uh, so what i wanted to tell you i forgot that point uh what was i telling them getting back no what what was i saying what was the last thing i said something about animals i wanted to say okay when it comes to me i will tell you ha huh. but the point is uh, if anybody remembers what i started speaking before i said we worked with the animals just get give me a feedback and then i can tell you there was an important point i wanted to make on animals but the thing is that with with animal remedies they might um you know they might not necessarily actually tell you revenge yeah but the fact that they want to hit back or the fact that they want to be protected from being hit yeah or the fact that they want to ah yes yes i got what i wanted to say i said aggressive yeah a lot of animal patients are very aggressive not necessarily by slapping people or you know by um by creating a big ruckus they could also channelize this aggression in their work that's what i wanted to say because that's what this man says he says you know i am aggressive but i haven't slapped i haven't abused no 
but when I have to get my job done, I'm aggressive and I will get it. So I often see aggression in animals as a positive theme and the humans, I mean sorry, aggression in humans needing animal remedies as a positive theme and they go for, for it, you know. They, they, um, they channelize that I want it in a positive way. They could be in, in social service, they could be good at their job. There is another thing that this guy said at some point of time, he says, I play. My aggression comes out when I play because you know what, I play to win. Now this is very clearly an animal feeling because in animals it's important to win or it's very terrible to lose. You could have a, an animal saying it's important to win or you could have an animal saying oh I lose every time. Losing is the other side of winning but this losing winning is not so much a mineral or a plant theme much more an animal theme and often I find that the aggression of several animals is never at fighting or you know things like that but it comes out in a very positive channelized way at the in their work front so remember this point okay so he comes back to me and he says so you know what I can smile and say hello to the person who's bothered me but in my mind I know I will get back at him and also in my mind, I'm smiling and saying, you know what I really want to do is kick your backside, man. So I said, tell me about kick your backside. And he says, that's just an expression. You don't do it. You know, you're living in this human civilized world. And, but you really want to tell that person that, look, you are taking away my credit. And I'm not going to let you do it. And I said, aha, now I understand. I totally understand now your core pattern and everything around it. And I said, a little bit more about this, aha, uh -huh, man. And he says, this happened to me. Now, you remember where we started with the case? Huh? I told you about how he was telling me about I'm not this surname and this caste or whatever. He comes back and he says, well, you know, recently, the last job I was in, and uh, not job, he was a consultant, but you know, the people that he had to speak to or whatever. And um, in this consultancy service or whatever, somebody else was trying to take away his position and somebody else was trying to take away his credit. So for a plan that he had suggested, there was another person who listened to the whole plan. And then when they had a final meeting with the company, this man put forth all our patients' plans as his own plan, you know. So, and this man who did the whole thing was from the same community that he was talking about when he started the case. Uh, so, you see, what he started with as anger and hatred, or not hatred would be very wrong word, but what he started off with, you know, I'm not this caste and I'm that caste was actually still that boiling anger from an old incident that had happened. So it's so interesting yeah, that it's in your, you could be just joking about something or you could be just mentioning something else, but that comes from a very deep pattern. Yeah. So it was, you know, he didn't need to say that when he started with the case, but that's so much part of his pattern that somebody else is taking away my credit and I have to constantly be alert about my credit that, you know, every time he comes across a situation, I mean, he's with a doctor, I have the same surname as, as him, but, you know, it's not threatening at all. But he still makes it a point because that threat is not in the outside. That threat is in his own pattern. And every time he sees that threat, he comes out huh? and he almost like attacks, you know. And this feeling, now I understood why he started the case with that. Also, it's very important that he, it looked like just a superficial phenomena, but he started the case with his deepest pattern. And he's ending the case with the deepest pattern. And he said, remember I told you about this surname? 
The reason I told you about is that two years ago, this is what happened. This man who was, you know, my sir, uh, you know, my surname and my whatever, and but a different caste, and this is what he did to me. And you know, he took away my credit, and I made it a point to get it back. You know, that's very important. And you know, I mean, had it been the wild world, he says, had it been the wild world. I mean, today we are very civilized, but I would have beat him up black and blue. And how could he do it, you know? So, you know, you are polite, but, you know, in my own polite way, I got it. And so he actually got it in the right way. But the, the deep down pattern is to get his own credit back. Then this time it was very clear to me that I would give him an animal, but I would give him an animal. Now, what have we derived from the story up till now? I, he would need a very powerful animal. He would need an animal who has the feeling of a king almost. He would need an animal who is responsible. A person who feels he is at the top of the food chain. Because what does he say? All those people are under me. All those people I'm responsible for. And that's what happens to animals. Animals are what at the top of the food chain. Literally, they are responsible for the entire food chain. That's why we also call them kings of the jungle. And he would definitely, at this point I would like to say, need a predator remedy. Because predators, A, are at the top of the food chain. They are extreme go-getters and they really hit back and, you know, uh, human predators. Yeah, I'm talking about human remedies, or human patterns that need predator remedies will channelize that anger and aggression in a good way and get a lot of success and will go up to that position. They like that position and power because it, in, in reality, because it, it, it satisfies that feeling of position and power which is part of the predatory pattern within. I've also seen that in prey remedies, you see a need to escape in a situation. You need to see, you, you see a need of hiding, of withdrawing, of feeling victimized. And you know like some horror cases that we have, some large deer cases, I also have some very interesting giraffe and elephant cases and these are big animals but these are prey animals and often their reaction in a situation even when they are large and prey animals is to run away. They could be performers in their work but they are performers who feel victimized whereas when you see a predator remedy he says I'm at a position or I see to it that no one can victimize me. I hit back. I get what I want. That's what a predator does in nature. He attacks. He victimizes. He gets what he wants. But he's also a predator from the mammal kingdom and not from the bird or the reptile kingdom. It could be bird also. But there's a difference between mammals and birds. It's the mammals who show off their power. Birds don't show off so much power. That's a big difference between mammal and bird predators. Difference between mammal and reptile predators are reptile predators are not so responsible. They're only thinking about themselves. Whereas he is showing a very strong trend of a father figure. Somebody who takes people with him, somebody who cares, somebody who has a responsibility for his people. That is a predator of the mammal kingdom and a top of the line predator. Now predators in the mammal kingdom, top of the line predators are the big cats. We'll see now where he goes from this point. Yeah. I said, uh-huh. He then said a lot about this credit and he said, you know, I hate people who take away the credit and you do it, you fight for it, you get it. 
I had another case, Sachindran, I had a very interesting case of Cheeta who said, you run for your pound of flesh, doctor. <laughs> you know, and that's exactly what the Cheetah does. He runs for his pound of flesh and he says, you know, you in the corporate world, get what you want. You, you deliver results. He was a fantastic salesman. You know, he's not somebody who fights on the road. So don't get me wrong. Predator remedies are not remedies who will fight on the road. But predator remedies are definitely remedies who fight in their performance, who give it their best shot and who want to achieve and who play to win. Yeah, this is the quality. So the aggression in humans is seen in their performance, is seen in their achievements, is seen in their targets. It could be seen in their anger and they could get into fights. I'm not saying no, but not that that's the main thing. Yeah. Okay. So I said, uh, he says, you know what, doctor? Yeah, as he went, he says, I'm also a very good chess player. You know, I'm, and as I told you, I play to win. So I said, okay, um, do you have any hobbies? Because now I wanted to know from him if there is any animal that he likes. And he says, well, I used to, as I told you, I used to play a lot of things. But, you know, then I got into work and business and, you know, all of this. And now I'm not doing any activity. But hobbies, yes. I would love to swim. I love the water. And I used to be a very good swimmer at some point of time. Today, I just sit in the pool and I enjoy myself. Uh-huh. Anything in, uh, so any other activity or anything that you would like to do? He says, I love traveling. I said, what do you, where do you like to go? What do you love about traveling? And he says, I love the greenery. I'm a wildlife enthusiast. And I said, great, that's going to lead me to where I want to go to. He said, tell me about wildlife. And he says, well, once a year, it's very important for me to go for a holiday on the hills and go looking for wildlife. I'm very fond of animals. And I said, oh, that's perfect. You've fallen into my trap. That's not what I said. I'm just joking. So um, I asked him my next question. Tell me about animals. Now, for those of you who don't know, because there's a lot of new people on this uh, webinar, we have formulated four questions on animals that we ask all our patients, be it a plant remedy, a mineral remedy, or an animal remedy. And these questions about animals and the animals that our patients pick up for the different questions help us to understand the power, the strength, the self-esteem, and the character of the patient. So, we ask these questions to all of them, all our patients. And I asked him the second question. I said, okay, in animals, is there any specific animal that attracts you or that you like? And he says, I like every animal. But you know what? It's the tiger and the leopard that fascinate me. They, I love the monkeys too. They are so intelligent, you know, so versatile, I like a few birds. But when you talk of fascination, it's leopards and tigers. Why, I ask him. He says they're a combination of power and strength. Aha, uh -huh. I didn't know that. Tell me about it. And he says, because you're sitting all the day on this chair. You hardly go out. Do you really do anything for yourself? And, you know, so he now started counter-questioning me. And um, I wanted to tell him that, no, the whole zoo comes to my clinic, you know, so I don't really need to go looking for wildlife. But that's not what we said. We said, yeah, I, I know, I don't know. Tell me a little bit. And he says, tigers and leopards, they are all power and strength. Do you know a leopard can even climb a tree? He's also a good swimmer. And I always go out to see them. There's a park, there's a national park close by in Bombay. And you see a lot of leopards there. Not a lot, but you do see leopards. And there have been a lot of encounters with leopards in that park. And he says, I have often gone very early in the morning walking in that national park because I was always hoping that I would spot a leopard. And, you know, everybody gets scared of them. I don't. And I have gone to various national parks. And that's when I have also seen tigers. And they are amazing. Little did he know that we actually do, I mean, of course, not at that point, but imagine six years, ten years, not six, eight years later, like last year, 
we did a whole homeopathic seminar in a jungle. And we saw live cases, but we also saw a lot of animals in the wild. In fact, we saw the tiger in the wild, and that was amazing. So coming back to this patient, he says, I have been to each national park in the country at least three to four times, and I still keep going. And when you go to a national park in India, you are going for the tiger doctor, mind you. I mean, he is the top of the line predator. He is the top of the chain. You don't go looking for birds and elephants and monkeys. You go looking for the big guy. You know what I mean? I said, no, please tell me a little bit more. What do you mean this big guy? He says, doctor, the top of the guy is not just the top of the chain guy. He's strong and powerful. But you know, he also controls the population of all the smaller ones in the well, in the jungle. Now, do you remember how he said, you are the king, but you take care of everyone under you. Yeah? It was so interesting how he mentions it. And he says, you eliminate the tiger and you are spoiling the whole ecosystem. So, I would say that it's the tiger who is most important in the food chain. And he's the topmost guy. So I said, okay. Now tell me a little bit between the leopard and the tiger. At that time, we had not really coined these questions. Yeah, We have four clear questions that we asked the patient. But at that time, we hadn't coined them yet. Yeah, This was just the beginning years when we were seeing a lot of animal remedies and animal mineral correlation. So we said, tell me a little bit about this leopard and tiger. And uh, you know, which one do you like out of the two? But these were the raw questions about animals that we were asking. I would say these were raw questions. Uh, he says, I like both. Yeah, but, you know, if you had to choose, which one resonates more? And he says, of course, the tiger, you know, the leopard is wonderful. But you see, the tiger is the topmost guy. He's the king. There's nobody who can question him. He attacks. And when he attacks, he's alone. He needs no assistance. He takes care of all issues. He doesn't depend on anybody. The other animals are all dependent on each other. The the deer, the monkeys say, you know, the monkeys give a call to the deer. The peacocks give a call that the tiger is on the prowl. The tiger needs no one. He hunts alone. He lives alone. And he's responsible for the food chain. And I said, oh, that's life and fascinating. And he says, you know, the tiger, when he attacks, he he might attack late in the evening. But from early morning or from a few hours ago, he's already scanned the whole area. He knows what he wants to do. He has done his homework. Now, this is exactly what he said when he was talking about, you know, his homework that he does when he goes to crack a deal. He says, you know, all the younger ones go and do it, but they haven't done their homework. I've done my homework, and when I go, I crack my deal. So here he says, you know, he's a fair guy. He's made the whole, um, he's taken track of the whole situation. He scanned the whole area, and, you know, he really gets it. And then he goes for his skill, and he's obviously going to get it very strategic like this, you know. And I said, aha. Uh -huh. And he says, I'm just trying to match up the tiger for you. I said, excuse me? I'm trying to match up the tiger for you. I said, match up the tiger? I mean, I'm matching him up for you, you know. You said, what do I like and what do I feel like? And I had never asked him that. Huh? I'd only asked him between the leopard and the tiger. And I said, I'm matching him up for you. So I said, matching him up with with, uh, with myself. I'm just matching him up for you. And I said, okay, thank you. You know, if you're talking about me, I'm as independent. I take my own decisions. I'm a leader. So if you're matching up me with anyone, here's the match. And I said, okay. I'm doing a little bit of psychology myself, you know, doctor. After one hour with you, I have understood what do you want?
it was so interesting you know he also wanted to show me that he is that's the other thing with predator remedies is that they want to show that they are one up than you they are above you they have to be because they are the ones who have to kill so their senses their observation is very sharp and i often see this in my predator cases in the clinic is that they show you through their wit they throw you sh through their answers you know that they have an upper hand over you because it's in their pattern to show this or that it's in their pattern to explain this you know or to bring it out somehow they are also very charming big cat remedies and when i'm saying this i'm not saying it in a negative way please don't get me negative in fact i feel some of the animal remedies have been the most positive and most amazing cases you know in the clinic not only amazing cases in the clinic but also wonderful individuals i'm trying to say that the one up man ship can also be very charming you know like he is one step before me you know and that he can answer or that he can answer the right thing you know like i had another case who for every question i made would counter question me and say what would you do in that situation and you know i, I would be taken aback by his answer and he would be like see you're trying to ask me now i've trapped you you can't trap me i'm going to be the one who gives it back so in a very charming witty way but he has to it, it is his pattern to be one up it is the pattern to be smart you know so they are also witty charming loquacious but not loquacious as in um there is no rhythm or there is no connection between what they are talking there is a lot of connection and they they also make a smart good talk yeah i am talking this about specifically about cat remedy okay now and then of course he said what we gave him was tiger yeah we gave him tiger um 200 to begin with because that's what we had and then immediately within some time we shifted him to a one importancy and the asthma the you know he never ever had those attacks of bronchitis he did have his cold and coughs in the first few months which were very well uh, taken care of with the prescription his uh, he improved in terms of his um, the blood sugar levels because his stress levels improved his anger his wife commented that his anger improved tremendously and the blood pressure was almost back to normal yeah and we could wean him off the antihypertensives completely um the acidity was very well taken care of so overall in the 3 years that we saw him and i would say that we did repeat tiger one him almost you know twice a year uh because he would have difficult situations which would aggravate him or you know worsen his sugars but he did very well and then beyond that he did not have these attacks of bronchitis or the acidity at all which is why he discontinued the treatment and the blood sugars is everything you know it's your diet it's your nutrition it's your exercise and the um the um anti glycemics that he was taking for all these years so it was a combination of all that and we could manage his blood sugars because his stress levels were much better overall i saw a huge improvement in this man but also at that time as we were working what i understood was the correspondence between the mineral and the animal for example all along as a mineral we were thinking of orum yeah we were thinking of a mineral that's very very strong very uh, gold yeah very king like very responsible very heavy and when you look at the tiger he is the king of the indian jungle yeah you have tiger as the king of the um indian jungles and lion who is more the king of the african jungles but in the indian and the asian jungles right from russia down to the far east where the tiger is a predominant cat he is the king of the jungle he is the top of the food chain and the way of attack that he this man was talking 
the way of mechanism of working in his field was exactly the same as the mechanism of attack of the tiger. And no wonder he did so well on the remedy. And it was one of those times where I then started working on, Suchandra and I started working on the correspondence between the sixth row and the big cat remedies. So sixth row remedies could look like the big cat or predator remedies. Whereas the fourth row remedies or the fifth row remedies are more the prey category of remedies. And of course, this is a whole big chapter by itself. You know, for the last six years, we work, worked on it. Our quick book, do you have the picture of the quick book? Can someone quickly show it? Yeah. Uh, I think quite a lot of you have this book. And that's the book which we uh, published two years ago, which gives you a detailed understanding, not understanding, detailed correspondence of all the rows of the periodic table and the rows in the animals of the periodic table. In fact, what we actually did is once we worked with all the animals, we created a whole almost like a periodic table chart of the animal kingdom. And we realized as we were working more and more with these remedies, is that you could find correspondence between mineral patterns and animal patterns and also plant patterns. And that you could superimpose this whole table that we had made of animals on the periodic table. And the quick book is this one. It's, it's called the quick book of animals and minerals. And it gives the correspondence between the periodic table the rows and columns of the periodic table and the various animals in the animal kingdom. Uh, and, and this has been very, very helpful, not just animals. Yeah? When I say animal, I mean the whole animal kingdom. So we have reptiles, we have birds, we have, you know, the whole mollusks, cnidarians, so the whole animal kingdom. Yeah. And I have found these correspondences extremely helpful in our practice. They have been extremely uh, helpful in difficult cases. They've also been helpful in cases where we are thinking of a mineral remedy, but actually it needs an animal remedy. Then once we know which mineral, we can just find out which animal corresponds to that mineral grow and prescribe an animal. It's also been the other way around where we found an animal that the patient talks about but doesn't need an animal at that point and we've given the mineral of the corresponding row and it has worked very beautifully in n number of cases for the past six years. I would also like to just say that today we even believe that in each one of us there is a plant mineral and an animal pattern. Basically we all have a pattern. And for that pattern, there's a plant, a mineral, and an animal pattern that can compare to this human pattern. And that can help this human pattern in times of disease or in times of need. Now, the other point is, therefore, this mineral, animal, and plant, which can help this human pattern must have some connection to each other. If they can all help this human, then they must have a certain connection to each other. And they do. So we have worked out the whole mineral and animal correspondences. And the next step is to work out the mineral, plant and animal correspondences so that we have a connection between all the three kingdoms of the, um, all the three kingdoms that are existing. I've also spoken about this whole understanding in the in the ne recent small book that uh, we have published, the Explore Your Inner Human Animal Connection. Yeah, this is, book is, I think it's, uh, the picture of it is already there on your screens if you can see it. And that's a very short book, but it explains our whole concept and it also explains the concept to patients. So if you want to give it to a patient to read it and understand it, then it's from a layman's point of view as well as for a doctor. Yeah. 
Um, just before, I do want to do a little bit more. Today we'll go a little longer because I want to differentiate the tiger from the lion. Yeah, just five, ten minutes more. But before that, I wanted to talk about uh, our events and seminars. Just before we go to the differences, I also want to differentiate ranunculaceae from composite, which was a question last uh, uh, at the last webinar. Those two, before I do that, just want to show you a little bit. This theory that I have just put forth today is a very, very profound theory and has a lot of interesting aspects to it. Today, I am just, um, you know, tantalizing you, yeah, because that's all I can do in this one and a half hours. I'm just showing you that this is the theory, but there is a whole lot more to this, and it's not new. We have worked on it for the last six to eight years. We've seen a lot of cases. We've thought about it. People have also seen results in their own practice and sent us feedbacks of how much they have used this theory. So I would also say that it's time-tested and it has been used by people other than us as well. And it has a lot of sense to it. Um, and of course, you need to know it in its depth and you need to know the whole, uh, the, the depth and the vastness of the theory. Um, a lot of this is what we talk about and teach during our webinars. Uh, we have a webinar which goes for a year long. This is called the Monthly Tonic with Joshis. It has been happening, I don't know for how many years now, three years already. And uh, in 2015, we will start our next series, which will be the fourth year. And um, this starts from the, from the 17th of April. And you have a special offer of uh, 260 now this is also not it doesn't have too many seats because people have been coming to it for the last three years so we already are you know we have a um a following already and already friends with us on this webinar um and it's a special offer for about 260 dollars uh until monday midnight india time yeah and the reason is we want to motivate more people and we want people to use this and see the benefits of this and see how it can help you solve your difficult cases in practice we also teach how to take cases and how to understand animals minerals plants through different cases yeah so the and the price has purposely been reduced at the moment until monday midnight India time yeah so just just um, bear this in mind what's the original price of this one it's about 300 US dollars so we have reduced it by $40 specifically for for new people for people who want to learn more about this and who want to be a part of this uh, kind of work that we are doing of course we'll be doing all kingdoms and we'll be doing various cases and acutes as well in this monthly tonic Okay, this I must tell you, it's a very interesting thing. In the month of June 2015, the links issue that comes is uh, dedicated, or not dedicated, yeah, is dedicated to this recent work that is happening all over the world. For example, I'm working, we are, Sachindra and I are working on the animal and mineral correspondences, but I know that Jan is also working on plant and mineral correspondences. And so this one is dedicated for on newer theories and newer concepts in homeopathy today. I'm the guest editor for this issue of June 2015. There are about uh, 12 to 13 cases from different people all over the world who have talked about their plant and mineral experience after having worked with our theory and uh, I'm sorry, uh, mineral and animal correspondences. And some have also talked about mineral plant and animal. Jan has also put his article in this with his theory of plant and mineral. And, um, you know, so it's, it's a lot of good work on this correspondences between kingdoms. Yeah. And I would really want you to, uh, you know, get hands on this one specifically and read through it because you will see a lot of cases based on this work. You'll also learn a lot of animal remedies and mineral remedies, but you'll also see people's work and other people's work on this theory. That's more important. Um, 
Okay, we, we will be in Hudson. So those of you who would like to come to New York, we will be in Hudson in uh, April, at the end of April. So it's April 30th to the 3rd of May. We're also doing a drug proving at this seminar. Yeah, and we usually about a nice group of 35 to 40 people. And uh, we're really looking forward to doing the drug proving here. So very soon we will be in Hudson. Of course, we'll be in Moscow. So those of you who want to join us in Moscow can join us in Moscow. We'll be in Bulgaria. These are the dates. I think all these dates have also been put up on our website. So you can at peace look at where, which part of the world you are in. And if you want to join us to understand more about uh, remedies and materia medica and philosophy, you're most welcome. Berlin, we're going to be in Germany as well on 30th of May. And then of course, after a gap of a year, last year, we've always been doing London seminars for almost 10 years now. And we had a gap last year, but we're back in London this year again, 5th and 6th of June. Uh, so this is our um, schedule in April and May, which would be great if you can uh, follow us or you can, you know, come and meet us or you can be part of this, our, our seminars. And that's TIG of 50M. This is an event that we are doing next year in India. This is an event where Petra, I think Petra was part of TIG of 50M with us. Giovanna, I don't know if she's, yeah, Maria Luisa and Giovanna are there as well, huh? On this, then you can see yourself on TIG of 50M because Giovanna, Petra, Maria Luisa were amongst, they are here today with us, but they were also here in Tiger 10M, which was done last year. Next year in 2016, we are repeating the event as Tiger 50M, and uh, the event will have live cases, because we do live cases there, almost two to three cases a day, or one, two, it depends on what are the other schedules for the day. And the other schedules for the day involve going for jungle safaris, looking at the flora and fauna in Ranthambore, looking for the tiger, looking for sloth bears, looking for leopards, looking for deer, looking for uh, all kinds of owls and seabirds. And of course, there's meditation and there will be a drug proving in this event too. And this will be a, a fun residential training for about 15 days. That's Tiger 10M next year. And it's always a very small group of people so that we can interact, we can um, discuss the cases in detail. It's usually a very small group, so we uh, close down um, the admissions for this one also very early. So if you do want to be part of this, you're most welcome. Okay, that's the website, which of course you all know. Um, now, I just want to come back to tigers and lions, yeah? The tiger has a very different way of survival than the lion. Now, A, you know that lions live in groups of, called as prides. Now, in, the, in Africa, they live in prides where there is a single male lion and there are, um, uh, with his pride of uh, female lions, about eight or ten or six females. Sometimes it could be as small as three or four. And the cubs of this male. Yeah. And so there is a very strong group theme in lions or in the cases of Lac Leonina where they really like following. Uh, following means they like people following them. Yeah. Uh, no, this was, no. No, no, this is only cats and dogs. This doesn't have anything between tiger and lion. Um, uh, so they, in a lion case, you always see that they need a lot of, uh, you know, when, in fact, they are very good at delegating. You know, this guy kept saying, I'm someone who will not delegate. I'm someone who will not delegate. I go on the field and I do it. I'm on the floor. I am commanding from the front. This is the way a tiger attacks. Lions always have group effort for attacking. Of course, the male does not attack. 
and it's only the females and the male only comes in at the last minute. In the Indian Asiatic lions, the males form a group yeah, of bachelor lions and then there's also lions in a pride where it's the male and female or only females with their cubs. But again, you see that they are a group. Yeah. So what you see in lion cases is they prefer to sit back and dominate. They prefer to dictate. They prefer to say, you do this and you do that and that one does this and that one does that. They're extremely good at delegating tasks. In tiger cases, what we see very clearly, and Sachandra and I have seen this often in our clinics and repeatedly and confirmed it clinically, though they could be at very high positions, tiger, pig patients, they don't like to sit back and say, you do this and you do this. They are the ones who will say, come on, let's do this, you know. And often I've seen tiger cases will say, I don't like people who delegate and just sit there on the chair and tell others to do their job. And often you see lion cases saying, I don't understand why people want to get down and do it. I simply give orders, you know. So they both have the feeling of being powerful and being kings, but it's the tiger patient who will get onto the field and do the job. It's the lion patient who will delegate. The miasm is also different. Tiger is much more cancer miasm, whereas lion is much more syphilitic miasm. Yeah, or lac leoninum. So Panthera tigris cebris, that's the remedy from the blood of the tiger, is cancer, whereas lac leoninum, which is from the milk of the lion, is more syphilitic. Um, there are, of course, the other cats, but I'm not going to go into all the different cats. I think I had written, if you have a tissue of spectrum some years ago, I think a couple of years ago, I wrote an issue on the big cats, only on big cats and differentiating the puma, the jaguar, the leopard, the lion, the tiger, the cheetah. Yeah. So you can uh, try and get a hold of that issue. Um, okay. I think we covered some of the most important things. Hope you enjoyed the session today. Okay, so um, we will um, t keep in touch with us and we will let you know about the next event. Yeah. Um, do join us, of course, for the webinar. The monthly tonic will be a very interesting event or has been for the past three years and will be next year too. Do join us personally, if you can, for any of the other events that uh, we have mentioned. And uh, if you have any questions or doubts sometimes regarding your animal cases, regarding where to get remedies from or you know, anything like that, do write to us and, you know, at the clinic we are always um, happy to, um, you know, answer your questions and help you out if we can with remedies or with suggestions. Okay, so all the best and we will keep in touch and we'll also send you a mail regarding any future events like this. See you either in cyberspace or in person somewhere, yes? Okay, bye-bye.